It is uh, great to have you all here. We're starting another year academically, and uh, this is just, it's, it, this is one of my favorite times of the year to welcome all of you in. Uh, you all have done some remarkable things up to this point. You have 4.09 GPA. That is the highest. That is the highest of any group we have brought here to this campus in engineering. So on that note, give yourselves a round of applause. That is also the highest. That is also the highest of any large group of students on this whole campus. So give yourself a round of Here's what we know, though. What, have, what has gotten you here won't necessarily get you there. You heard that message this morning. Our job is to fill in the blanks, to give you what you need to go from where you are now, which is really, really good, to where you can be, which is really, really great. So we want to take you from good to great. And we think we have the necessary ingredients of doing it. And we're going to need you to be great. You're facing a world with tremendous challenges. Tremendous challenges. There are about 7.5 billion people on the planet today. Over the next 10 years, we're going to add a billion more. The Earth as we know it can sustain about 5 billion people comfortably. How many of you here, how many of you here today, are from outside of Orange County, California? Raise your hand. So you undoubtedly had to ride in an automobile or a vehicle in order to get here. And if you had to do that, you had to pass bridges and overpasses. Well, every other year, the American Society of Civil Engineers does a study. They look at the quality of our bridges, our aqueducts, our dams, our levees. And what they've told us is that about one out of every three bridges and overpasses are structurally deficient or functionally obsolete. What that means is that they can't carry the loads in which they were designed to carry. So think about this when you go home for break. <laughs> Let's go over a bridge or an overpass. Just count them out. One, two, three. Can this be the one? One, two, three. Can that be the one? It's a $3.3 trillion problem. And even if we had the money as a country, even if we had it, there's not enough raw material on the earth for us to fix our infrastructure at the same time that Brazil, Russia, India, and China are building their infrastructures. So what does that mean? Does it mean that there's no solution? There's just no solution that we know of. You're going to be tasked with finding that next solution. How many of you have smartphones? The other thing we have to deal with is tremendous change. Can anybody tell me when the first smartphone was invented? 2007. I heard somebody say it. 2007. That's right. So before 2007, there were no apps to think of. So all of the jobs associated with apps did not exist. Before Google came, became a public company in 2004, Facebook <coughs> was not a company until 2007. So all the jobs associated with Facebook, many of the jobs associated with Google, did not exist 10 years ago. They just wasn't here. Uh, you know, the top 10 in-demand jobs today did not exist in 2010. I mean, in 2004. They just was not here. And five years from now, four years from now, when you all graduate, there will be whole new fields of endeavor that will exist that are not here today. There'll be whole new job opportunities that will exist that are not here today. Our job is to prepare you, and your job is to prepare yourself for the opportunities in which you do not know that are coming. You're also going to have unprecedented competitors. 
when I grew up and I came out of school, I had to worry about students from UCLA and uh, uh, Georgia Tech and others. I, we were all competing for the same jobs, MIT and the like. When you graduate, you'll be competing not just with those schools, but you'll be competing with students from IIT Bangalore, from Tokyo University. You'll be competing with schools like Tsinghua University in China. You will be competing with students from all over the planet. Why? Because the companies that source talent in the US source talent globally. Okay? I had the CTO for Boeing tell me the other day, all of you should expect at least one job opportunity in your career outside of this country. See, I don't know where you're going to wind up, and you don't know where you're going to wind up, but we have to prepare you to get there. Engineering has the highest acceptance rates of law school, highest acceptance rates of med school, highest acceptance rates of dental school, highest acceptance rates of vet school. You want to be a CEO? 23% of all Fortune 500 CEOs have engineering as a first degree. That's twice the number that have business as a first degree. But the only, way, only place you won't find engineers in predominance is in the 535 members of the House of Representatives and the Senate, <laughs> where only seven have engineering degrees. Actually, more have no degree, more have no college education whatsoever than those that have an engineering degree. So look at the state of the country it is in and go figure. <laughs> Okay? But we have to prepare you for that, and guess what? We're up to the challenge. We have an opportunity, a framework in place for you that if you grab and you grasp and you reach, if you, as you were told this morning, if you do that, you will make that transformation from really good to really great. It is all in front of you. We have a great first year engineering program. I know a number of you have signed up for that. It's the only first year engineering program as a UC. At a UC, you will learn what it is to be an engineer as a freshman. 